Okay, we're going to take a quick look and review of some of the stuff we saw in Engineering 101 uh, with regards to network modeling. So we can ask a lot of interesting questions like why do we need to bother modeling networks and in reality it is just something that we need to do to check that our network works the way that we expect before we implement it. We'd never roll out a multi-million dollar network without testing it exhaustively first and the best way, the cost, most cost effective way to test something is to model it. So just to review, in uh, Engineering 101, we talked about the multi-layered OSI model of, of um, any kind of connected network of computers. And in general, the OSI model has seven layers. We're only gonna worry about five of them, which go from the physical layer, like a physical copper or fiber optic wire or Wi-Fi uh, radio signals connecting things, right the way up to the application layer. But just to go through this, your physical layer will have a standardized series of voltages and this is the layer at which ones and zeros will be sent. The layer above that is the data link layer, that's where we allocate channel usage and that's where things like MAC addresses come into play. The next layer up is the network layer and this is the layer that deals with the movement of packets and IP addresses. The transport layer this controls end-to-end -end communication, so communication between hosts on the network, which we'll come to soon, as that means things like TCP or UDP, your communication protocol, and the application layer is the layer that the software engineer might deal with on top of that. So it could be that you're using uh, Thunderbird on Mac to send an email, that only deals with a network at that very high level um, application layer. Um, the main components of networks are switches, routers, and hosts. Switches only operate on layer one and two and are very, very fast because they don't operate at any of those higher levels. But what that means is they can only pass traffic within networks. Routers are the next step up, slightly slower than switches, but allow the sharing of traffic in between different networks. They allow inter-network communication. And the full stack you'd see on a host machine. It could be a server, it could be a client, it could be uh, an Android device, it could be anything like that. And that operates on every single level of the OSI model. But because of that, they are also the slowest and the most expensive. So switches are the fastest, hosts are the slowest, hosts are the most flexible, switches are the least flexible. Um, you can kind of imagine how this process works by looking at this diagram here. If we start to send a bit of information from one computer to another, it starts at this application layer as a raw bit of information. It might be a string of letters that might say, hi mum, in an email, for example. What that does is once it leaves your program that you're using to compose that email, it's wrapped up as it travels down through those layers on the network, from the transport to the network, to the link layer, to the physical layer. Um, it's sent at the physical layer from one machine to the next machine usually via a switch if it's at a switch or a bridge as we see in this example uh, it's unwrapped to that second layer and then it's passed on if it hits a router it's unwrapped to the network layer then rewrapped and sent on its way and it's only when it arrives at its ultimate destination that it is completely unwrapped and delivered way back up to the top at the application layer um, Remember that IP addresses, uh, they map physical locations around the globe for us. Not your subnet, but if you look at the IP address of Victoria University of Wellington, for example, if you look up what is my IP when you're on campus at Victoria, you will find a physical uh, like set of GPS coordinates associated with that IP address. IP addresses allow us to route traffic around the world destined for specific IP addresses. Whereas if you are within a network, those IP addresses just allocate you an address within that border network. And that's what we mean by a LAN. A LAN is simply any communicating node that share a single broadcast domain. And by that, I mean any node with an IP address uh, that is shared with other IP addresses on the same network. So I've given you two examples on the slide, 192.168.1.3 or 10.0.0.3. These are very, very common subnets um, and essentially many computers on these subnets will automatically be able to communicate with each other because they are part of the same LAN. So a really good question to finish up might be, why if we have IP addresses to do all that, do we also need MAC addresses? And the problem is actually very simple. MAC addresses 
are unique identifiers for specific bits of hardware. They appear on your network interface card and individual devices like a laptop or a smartphone might have multiple MAC addresses because they have multiple ways of connecting to the network. IP addresses, however, are dynamically assigned. They can change over time and this allows us to not use up all the IP addresses that we actually have. MAC addresses are more complicated and there are more of them. IP addresses are dynamically assigned to us by whatever networks that we are connected to at the time.